ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلالة في النار ثم اما بعد الحمد لله على نعمه الاسلام والسنه all praise and thanks belong to Allah for bestowing upon us the bounty of guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the sunnah this is a tremendous bounty indeed one which we have to constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to safeguard for us to protect it for us and we have to constantly beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his guidance and that he makes us of those who die upon guidance those who are raised upon guidance and with those who are upon guidance and those who meet him upon guidance and we have to constantly thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding us this is the the first in a series of classes bi idhnillahi ta'ala which is dealing with advice nasiha lil mar'a al muslima advice to the muslim woman and the origin of the material that we'll be utilizing it was actually a lecture that was given by the allama Sheikh Saleh Al-Fawzan Hayyallahu Ta'ala The class material was sent out so I hope that everyone has the book in front of them either the printout because they have printed it or they have it on one of their mobile devices and this is important because we don't want this particular class to be something that we just sit and we casually listen to it and the like but we would like it to be something that is a true benefit to us and in the way in which or from the means in which 
were able to truly benefit from the likes of these classes is that one, to the best of our ability, we shall have the class material. This is a big aid when it comes to truly benefiting or benefiting from classes. Also, we should have a notebook. And one of the brothers, Jazakallah Khaira, he has purchased a great number of notebooks and pens for those who are here so that they may benefit from them and utilize them. For those who are at home, then we advise them to have some pen and some paper to take notes. If they don't have a notebook at this particular time, then to have a pen and paper to take notes. And then later on, throughout the week, let them purchase a notebook where they can write or copy the notes that they have written on these loose pieces of paper and put it inside of the, the notebook, inshallah ta'ala. Also, from the benefits of having the book in front of you, is that you'll be able to read along, which will help you to pay attention, and it will help you and aid you in the nusuls that are contained inside of the book, meaning the texts that are contained that are contained inside of the book from the Quran and from the Sunnah. Because with this class here, those ayat that the Allama he mentioned, Allah Taala. I would like that they are memorized. I would like that they are memorized. Now, those ayat that are mentioned by the alama, I would like that they are memorized. So for the notebook, it would be good if you had a multi-subject notebook where you can write the class notes in one section, another section where it will be like a summary of the proofs and evidences that was mentioned by the sheikh. And this is a good habit to get into. That whatever book you read is good to make a summary, chapter by chapter, of the proofs and evidences that were mentioned. Now, this is a very good uh, practice. That you will put whatever the topic of that, of that chapter is, you will write that. And then you will write down all of the proofs and evidences that were brought in that chapter. And you do this for each chapter. The reason is so that it makes you it makes it easier for you to memorize these proofs and these evidences along with the appropriate chapter. So you will know in this particular chapter, in this subject, then we have some verses. Allah Ta'ala, He says this about this. Allah Ta'ala, He says this about that. The Prophet Sallallahu He says this about this subject. And so on and so forth. And this will help you. And memorizing is very, very important. Now, memorizing is very, very important. As the poet, he said, إِنْ لَمْ تَكُنْ حَافِظًا وَاعِيًا فَجَمْعُكَ لِلْعِلْمِ لَا يَنْفَعُ أَتَحْضُرُ بِجَهْلِكْ فِي مَجَالِسٍ وَعِلْمُكَ فِي قُطْبِ مُسْتَوْدَعُ he says, uh, do you present yourself in the circles of knowledge? Or, yani, excuse me, before that, he says, do you, your gathering, or if you, do, if you do not become one who memorizes and who safeguards the knowledge by memorizing it. He said, then your collecting of knowledge will not benefit you. Your collecting of knowledge, it will not benefit you. Do you present yourself inside of the gathering with your ignorance? In other words, do you bring your ignorance with you to the sitting, to the gathering? 
whereas your knowledge is in books safely guarded somewhere else? Well, your knowledge is in books safely guarded somewhere else. Now, you don't want us to be of those who, when it comes to the vast majority of that which is with them, is that which is not with them. Yeah? Meaning that they have not memorized and really grasped and gone over things well to the point that they could spit it out or they could narrate it ma'am, with precision. But those who will have to return back to their books to be able to relate anything. How many people are like that? Where when subjects come up, they'll say, well, I read something about that. I remember hearing something about that, but I'm not sure. Let me, let me, let me double check. And what's double checking? You have to go back to the book and look and then, oh yeah, right here. No. They want to be of those who memorize so they can tell you with precision. Now, memorize, they can tell you with precision. Not for the sake of relating. I don't want anyone to understand that such is done because with the, the sole intention of being able to relate it accurately to someone else. No. The point is, is that if you can accurately relate it to someone else, then that means you have it good enough to what? That you can contemplate on it. You can reflect on it. You can think about it. And that this knowledge is with you wherever you go, wherever you're at. If you're inside the marketplace, your knowledge is with you inside the marketplace. If you're inside the house, your knowledge is with you in the house. Wherever you may go, wherever you may be, driving down the road, walking, now, your knowledge is there with you. You can contemplate. You can reflect over it. And this is something that is important because this is what will have an effect upon the heart. This is what will have a good effect upon an individual's character that he reflects over the, the text of the Qur'an and the Sunnah, that he contemplates over the text of the Qur'an and the Sunnah. This is from those things that will enrich our lives. Now, of course, I don't have the ability to check the students because the students, they are sisters. Now, so I ask the husbands and the fathers to, and the brothers and yeah, I mean, the, the, the siblings to test the women in their family as it relates to the proofs and the evidences that, 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 that have come and to also if they are listening I mean, to and for those at home and for those brothers who are here, to take notes as well so that you may quiz them and that you may test them and so on and so forth so that everyone benefits, inshallah ta'ala. Naam, so that everyone benefits, inshallah ta'ala. So with that, we would like to get into the beginning, the beginning of this tremendous word of advice to the Muslim women that was given by the Alama Sheikh Saleh and Fawzan. The Sheikh Hamidullah Ta'ala he begins by saying Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in he begins by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All praise is for Allah, the Lord of all that exists, the Lord of everything that exists. Now, and may the peace and blessings, may the peace and praise, the blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as well as on his family and all of his companions. Amma ba'd. فقد راى الاخوه المسؤولون عن الدعوه ان تكون محاضره في موضوع نصيحه للمراه المسلمه he said that those who were responsible for this da'wah that يعني meaning for this setting up this lecture for setting up this lecture then 
they have chosen or they 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 felt that it was accurate now and they have chosen as the topic they have chosen of the topic of this lecture that it should be on the subject of advice to the muslim woman advice to the muslim woman now and it is important that we concentrate on the muslim women as relates to their education because education for the muslim women is something that is very very important it's something that is tremendously important education for all muslims now but in particular we want to focus on the muslim women especially with the propaganda that is all over the media the western media which tries to send the message that Islam is not concerned about the education of the Muslim woman and this is not correct it's the furthest thing from that which is correct but rather there is a great emphasis placed upon educating the Muslim woman and there is a great benefit for society when the Muslim women they are educated they are educated naam however i want to make a tanbih here and this is because a lot of people when you say education the first thing that comes to their mind are interdisciplinary subjects this is the first thing that comes to their mind and women being educated in interdisciplinary subjects and it has its place and it has its importance now it has its place and it has its importance however i want to remind myself and all the sisters who are listening that the ultimate and main education is what is education of your religion this is education the interdisciplinary studies these are secondary these are secondary and this goes for men as well I don't want any sister who hears my voice to think that this is something that is particular to them to the exclusion of the men no men too the original line of study is what is your religion that's first anything else is what is secondary right and the reason is that it's very simple the reason is very simple whatever you may study from interdisciplinary studies whatever that subject may be mathematics now the sciences right whether it be chemistry biology now whatever science it may be uh yeah any um, literature right language sciences geography to the end of it all of these things all of these sciences they will benefit you that which is beneficial from them where in this world in this world yes they will benefit you but they will stop where at the grave when the angels question you they're not going to ask you if you know the geographic location of this country or that country they're not going to ask you what was the name of this ocean and that ocean upon the map they're not going to ask you what author wrote this particular book and when did that author live and who it? they're not going to ask you these things they're not going to ask you if you know the different systems biological systems inside of the body if you know any yani, the different parts of the eye and what each part does they're not going to ask you any of that but what are they going to ask you man rabbuk who is your lord my deen or what's your religion my nabi you who's your prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is what they're going to ask you this is what's important and this is an indication that shows us that what that the knowledge of the deen it lasts beyond the grave you understand that it benefits you here in this world and it benefits you in the next so that which is more beneficial should take what precedence right that's the origin because it has a greater value and everything else that may benefit you yes it benefits you so you want to stick to that and you want to be diligent upon that which benefits you but you understand 
its relation with regards to priority. In other words, yes, it's a priority, but it's secondary. Why? Because that, you know, give or take. The dunya stuff, give or take. A lot of that stuff we can get around. A lot of that stuff, it doesn't hurt us if we don't know about it. But the religion, if we don't know about it, that hurts us. In this life and in the next. You understand? So, the affairs of the deen comes first. So when it comes to education, I don't, and, and this is the thing, I don't want anyone, especially those sisters, who are striving to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't ever want you to feel disadvantaged. Disadvantage. I don't ever want you to feel that you have no options. You understand? And what do I mean by this? Let me say it more, more clearer, <coughs> more direct. Those people who are trying to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will find that there are many roads that are restricted to them, or they're great hindrances, right? With regards to interdisciplinary studies. A lot of things we're going to be restricted on. And in particular, I mean those who are here in the West, in Western societies. Because the universities, they are mixed between the sexes. Now, well, you have a teacher from an opposite gender. Or, وَعِيَاذُ billah, You may have a teacher who don't even recognize their own Gender because they are so sick and twisted that they believe that they are the other gender that they are not. Meaning, what you may even have a teacher that's transgendered. What kind of calamity? I mean, this is a calamity, right? So, and we don't want to get too much into this issue, but we understand the danger in mixed environments, in particular, mixed education. We understand the danger in this. So there's a lot of danger. Then the protocols of these classes are set up in a way to destroy you. Where they want you to work in group projects. Sometimes only having one partner. Often what the teachers will do in their sickness is that they'll put one gender with another gender. So they'll put a man student to be a partner with a, a female student. And so on and so forth. You find this is like their origin. Because it, it, their mandate is somewhat, it's to spread their corruption, to spread their filthy lifestyle. This is the mandate from the mandate of Western education. Whoever didn't know, now you know. The educational system is a great tool for the colonizing powers. It's a great tool to keep people in line and to brainwash them and to mold their mentality into that which is acceptable to the powers that be. So they want to push their kufr on every way that they can push it. So you have all of that to deal with, Right? And I don't want to get too much into that, but you know, a little bit is said and, 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 and a lot more is understood. And then you have the issue of the loans to schools. They are so, even if you can find uh, yani, a school that had a halal environment in the West, it's so expensive people can't afford it. So then they offer you a loans, riba. All of these things which, which help support their, what, their, their, their disbelieving society. You understand? So, a lot of this is not an option for the men nor the women. Now, a lot of this is not an option for the men, for the Muslim men nor the Muslim women. But we're talking about the Muslim women right now. So some Muslim women will feel that they are at a disadvantage. They can't do this, they can't do that, they can't do this, they can't do that. And do you know what the shaitan he does? He capitalizes on he keeps whispering to the sister about whatever discipline she may like. Maybe she wants to be a doctor. Maybe she wants to be a nurse. Maybe she wants to be you know, a scientist. She wants to go into pharmaceuticals and pharmaceutical development, research development, and so on and so forth. Right? So then he'll come and he'll put ahead with all these doubts. Well, you can't do this. You can't do that. Okay, you, how are you going to go to the lab? You can't be in a lab. And then how are you going to do this? And then, uh, and then he tries to make her feel despair. He tries to make her feel, you know, bad and now depressed about the situation. Why? Because, one, he wants to distract her from that which is better. 
right? He wants to distract him from that, which is better, but have a focus on something else. And two, all of the games that the shaitan plays with the minds of the people who are depressed. Alakulli had. We don't want to get too much into that. A little was mentioned, inshallah, more was understood. What we forget is that we have an opportunity to do that which is even better. You understand? We have resources, much resources at our disposal to at least start along a way of that which is much better. So for that sister, for example, I wanted to be a nurse, I wanted to be a doctor, or she wanted to go into research and development and so on and so forth. Now, but this, because she's in the West, she can't go to an Islamic university or a Muslim university that has these courses offered uh, with the sexes separated, they have the hijab. Now, but so she so 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 that is shut down for her for right now until she can go to that situation. May Allah Ta'ala make things easy for all of us to live in the lands of the Muslims. I mean, but despite when you compare that to what is at her disposal to learn, you realize that what is easy. And at her disposal to learn, and she has the resources to learn, is better than research and development, being a doctor, being a nurse, being a, being a, being a, being a. Why? Because she has at her disposal the book of Allah. So instead of her putting her mind, okay, I want to take four years to get this degree and these accolades, why not put yourself on a four-year program to memorize the Quran? To memorize the Quran with a good memorization. To understand the ayat, to go over yani, a tafsir from beginning to the end. Yeah, you understand? Put herself on a four year track for that. This will benefit her, benefit her way in this dunya. It will benefit her in this dunya because the Quran is guidance. The Quran is guidance. The Quran is a healing. Huh? So she benefits in the dunya. And in the akhirah, she benefits. In Akhirah, she benefits. As we know, an authentic hadith where the Prophet he said that uh, on the Yawm Qiyamah, that, that an individual, will, will, it will be said to them, recite. Recite. Like you used to recite inside of the dunya. And they will recite, and they will raise for every ayah. The level will, will keep going up every ayah until they finish from what they had with them. So now imagine the level of the one who has memorized all of the ayat of the Qur'an. You understand? Now, would you rather that, or would you rather have been in research and development and found you know, whatever you may have found from that which benefits the human beings when they was on earth? What would be more beneficial for you as an individual? Of course, it would be to learn the Quran, and then it gives you the, and then it gives you the opportunity to what to teach the Quran. And the Prophet said, "He said what? Now, خير من تعلم القرآن وعلم." That the best of you are those who learn the Quran and then they teach it. The Prophet are telling me described him as being what khayrukum, the best of you, the best of who, the best of the Muslims. So, according to the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I don't know whose people, yani, who's uh, you know, who they respect, but the, the Muslims, the Sunni Salafi, we respect who the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. More than any other human being. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَ The best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach it. Meaning better than who? Better than a doctor. Better than an engineer. Better than an RN. Right? Better than someone in research and development. Better. Better. Why? Because that which they have learned and that which they are teaching is better than what the doctors learn and what the doctors teach. Better than what the doctors learn and what the doctors practice. It's better. Because the body, now, nah, the body's going to die anyway. Yeah, you understand? The body's going to die anyway. Whatever whatever benefits the human beings while they are alive is, 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 is temporary anyway. But an individual understanding the book of Allah, being taught the book of Allah, being guided, this was what? SubhanAllah. It will benefit them in this world and in the next. It will benefit them whether their bodies are healthy or their bodies are sick. It will benefit them when they are alive and it will benefit them when they are dead. 
So never lose track on this. Never forget this. You have at your you have at your hands you any uh, great resources that you don't take advantage of. Many of us we don't take advantage of it, and we use what we use to benefit until we're able to do more. How many books have been translated into the English language? Take advantage of this. Yes, it's a crutch, but take advantage of the crutch while you need it. Strive to learn Arabic. How many things have been made easy? Centers of Arabic that are offer online courses that are segregated from Ahlul Sunnah. I'm not talking about whatever whoever may offer. I'm talking about from Ahlul Sunnah. Don't learn from a person except that he's Salafi. Now let's make that clear. But we have this set up now, ran by that by Ahlul Sunnah. So benefit from them. Learn Arabic. And until you become proficient where you can throw away your crutch, then you still use your crutch. While your, while, while your legs are getting strong, use the crutch. But once your legs have become strong enough, we don't need the crutch, then get rid of the crutch. You don't need the English no more. You understand? Take advantage of these things because you have these at your disposal. Put yourself on a four-year track to accomplish something, whatever you want to accomplish, and then do another four years to accomplish whatever else you want to accomplish, and then do another four years and build upon that and keep doing that until, until you die. Ala kulli had. Al-Alama, Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan, Ta'ala, he mentions, he says that the brothers, they have chosen this topic. It's a very important topic. However, for the brothers, the Shaykh, he says, وَهَذَا لَا يَعْنِي أَنَ الْمُحَادُرَ خَاصَ بِالْمَرْأَ بَلْ هِيَ عَامَ He said, this doesn't mean that the, the lecture is something that is particular to the women only, specific to women only. He said, but no, it's something that's general. Meaning what? Everyone can benefit from it. Everyone can benefit from it. Now, men and women. ولكن يكون التنبيه فيها على ما يختص بالمرأة أكثر. He said, but, but the emphasis on that which will be mentioned therein, it is that which places it is is on the issues that are particular to the women. Now, but there will be an emphasis on those. Topics that are more particular to women. But it doesn't mean everyone else can benefit. The Shaykh, he says, وَلَا شَكْ أَنَّ الرَّجُلْ أَيْضًا مَسْؤُولْ عَنِ الْمَرْأَةِ He said, and there's no doubt. There is no doubt that a man is responsible for a woman. Responsible for a woman. Naam. So these affairs are important for him as well. Fathers need to know how to speak to their daughters. Brothers need to know how to advise their sisters, right? Grandfathers need to know how to talk to their granddaughters, and so on and so forth. Uncles need to know how to talk to their nieces, right? And help them in issues that are particular to them. The only way he can do that is that what he has to learn about those issues that are particular to the women, so that he may help and be, uh, 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 yani, um, he may be a resource of benefit in the life of the of the women. Uh, uh, in his family. طيب. The Shaykh says, فَإِنَّ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى مَنَّ عَلَى الرِّجَالِ بَأَنْ خَلَقَ لَهُمْ And I want, listen, women, I want you to, I want you to really understand this. I want you to really understand this. And I want the men to really understand this. Because the women, some of them, too many of them, suffer from low morale. They have bad opinions of themselves. And they may be self-conscious about themselves. And all of this is due to the propaganda of the kuffar, what the kuffar they put out there. When they try to tell you what beauty is, what beauty is not. What's the ideal this and the ideal that. Right? From the ideal look to the ideal lifestyle to the ideal deal, deal, deal whatever. So sometimes the shaitani utilizes this propaganda to what? To try to make the Muslim woman feel bad. To try to make her feel bad about what she's upon. Because if he can get her to, to, to feel bad about what she's upon, then she'll deem what she's upon as not being sufficient. Which will motivate her to look into something else. She will look for alternatives. He has plenty of alternatives for her. Plenty, plenty paths of kufr there. Pick whatever one you want to pick because the end result is the same as the hellfire. 
But this is what the shaitan is going to trick the shaitan. So those who put out these things, yani these yani from the shayateen. These are from the shayateen. So it's important that the Muslim woman, she be reminded of her status. She be reminded of her level. She be reminded of her value. And it's important for the Muslim man to be reminded of the value of the Muslim woman. The shaykh, he says, and I want you to listen to the wording the shaykh, he mentions. He says, Man, he says, فَإِنَّ Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala manna ala rijal He said because verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed has blessed the men. He has gave the a men a great blessing. A great blessing. What is that great blessing Allah has given the men? That he gave the men big muscles, a bigger frame. These things are blessings, no doubt. Nah? But that Allah Ta'ala He has blessed the men. That he has created for them from themselves what? Spouses. That he has created for the man from himself, meaning from his same species. Spouses. From his same species, what? Spouses. This is a great blessing. A great blessing. And you see how Shaitan he plays with the minds of the people? Now he comes and he tells the people that this is not the origin. This is not the standard. A man for a woman. Woman for a man. That's not the standard. But a man can be for a man. A woman can be for a woman. Yes, and that. You understand? You see, you see it. You see the tricks of Shaitan. You see how Shaitan tried to attack us from, 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 from so many angles? It's important that we realize this. It's important that we realize this. Because the undervaluing of the status of the Muslim woman is a great and evil plot. Because once her status becomes undervalued, then what? Then the Shaitan, he will try to raise the value of a Kafir woman. Just to put down the status of even a Kafir woman. For what? To raise the possibility of raising the value for what? Even a man. And vice versa for the woman. So it's important that we understand the value. It's a great blessing. The women, you sisters, great blessing. Great blessing. A tremendous blessing. Your level is tremendously awesome. With an alhamdulillah, I don't ever want you to forget that. The level is tremendously awesome. What did Alhamdulillah don't ever want you to forget that? There ain't no calf in this world. Ain't no calf in this world even deserve to wash the feet of a Muslim girl. That's the reality. No calf or woman in the world even deserve to wash the feet of a Muslim girl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Ya ayyuhan nas, O human beings, Ya ayyuhan nas, taqu rabbakum. O oh, mankind, fear your Lord. Who created you from one soul. And he created from that soul its mate. And he brought from, from those two many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights. And do and and fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights. And do not cut off relations with the wombs that boy. In Allah Kana Alaikum Rakiba, verily Allah is over you a watcher. This ayah it's tremendous. And it reminds us of the origin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for the men, the women, and for the women, the men. This is how it should be. Qala subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Huwa alladhi khalafakum min nafsi wahida wa ja'ala minha zawjaha liyaskuna ilayha so it's important not just to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created 
the man for the woman and the woman for the man, this is the only way it is. This is not, yani. You know, we don't want to say this is the origin as, as if to say that then are, there are other, you know, subsidiary matters that can come, come about in other, uh, you know, uh, uh, variations that are acceptable. No, this is the only way that's acceptable. A man for a woman, a woman for a man. That's it. It's the only way that's acceptable. Like it, who like it, hate it, who hate it. You understand? But it also is an indication to us to strive to marry righteous individuals and to strive for marriage and to be very diligent and to be very keen and to be very, yeah, any, uh, for lack of a better term, even picky when it comes to picking a spouse. Let me make sure that an individual is upon good religion. That's what I mean, picky. I don't mean, you know, whatever, the other stuff that's, that's not uh, as important. But I mean that which is real important, the real importance. And that is that we find an individual has good religion, individual who's going to help us to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah ta'ala, he not just tells us that he created uh, yani, uh, yani, uh, the man from woman and the woman from the man, but Allah ta'ala he tells us the reason. Allah ta'ala, he says, that He is the one who has created you, from one soul. And then he has made from that soul its mate. He has made from that soul its mate. Naam. And this is uh, because yeah, yeah, human human men marry human women, and human women, women marry human men. Allah Ta'ala says, "The yaskuna ilayha," so that you may live and cohabit with her. Where in marriage, in marriage, yes, this, you understand? So that you may marry and live together. This is very important. I don't think that some of us realize what is meant by that. I don't realize or think that some of us knows what is intended by that. Imam Sa'ni Rahimullah Ta'ala he says the yes yani commenting on Allah Ta'ala's statement, Liaskuna ilayha so that you may live along with her. Li annaha ida kanat minhu hasala bainahuma milmuna saba. He said because the yani, the wisdom on why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has created for us spouses from ourselves, human spouses. He said, because since the since, since the woman yani, is, is a human, like the man is a human, then this is suitable. It'll bring about suitability. It'll bring about suitability. Now, they're from the same type. They're from the same species. They're both human beings. You understand? But when muwafaqa, and they'll be able to find agreement, because they're both human beings. They have similar needs. They have similar, you know, so on and so forth. So they're able to and I want everyone that's married, looking to be married, and so on and so forth, to pay attention. There's a wisdom in this. Because when we have similar needs, you understand? We're able to sympathize with our spouses. When we see that they're hungry, we know what that feels like because we get hungry. When we see that they are upset, they're sad, we know the importance of trying to comfort them because we know how it feels to be upset and to be sad. So therefore, an individual, he can spring into action with the appropriate actions to comfort his wife. She can spring with the appropriate actions to comfort her husband, so on and so forth, so that they may live together with one another. مَا أَحَدُهُمَا إِلَى الْآخَرِ that which will you know, necessitate and that which is necessitated by them living uh, together and, co- and cohabiting together as man and wife and so on and so forth. فَنْقَالْ كُلُّ مِنْهُمَا إِلَى صَاحِبِهِ And I want everyone to pay close attention to this is so that and in, in, in here I want, the, I want the husbands to pay attention more. You understand? I want the husbands to pay attention a little more but for the wife too. And that is Imam Sa'ni, he says, so that in, in, in order to, that which is necessitated by living together as husband and wife, is that what? Is that each yield, is that everyone from the two, each of them learn how to yield what? To their companion. That their husband learns how to yield to his wife. That the wife learns how to yield to her husband. Now, sometimes you got to give in. And when, when it comes to things that are halal, of course, we're not speaking about giving in and something that's haram. No. But when it comes to things that are halal, nah, sometimes you got to give in. So to give in. 
So to give in to the spouse is very important. It's very important. Now, sometimes you have to yield. It's not, a, it's not an issue of wills, a, a test of wills, who has the strongest will. No. Sometimes you have to yield. Sometimes you have to give in. Maybe you didn't want Chinese food, but she wants Chinese food. Really, really, really bad. So then what? You have Chinese food. Right? And you don't give her no indication that you really ain't want it. You understand? You don't give her no indication. You, you, you will feel very happy. You're happy. Right? Why are you happy? Because you help her be happy. And this is good. This is a good thing. To bring joy to the Muslims. To bring joy to one's spouse. This is a good thing. Huh? This is a good thing. Allah Ta'ala will reward you for that. That is bringing them joy in that which is halal, of course. That which is halal. Naam. But I want us all to remember this and to reflect upon this. This ayah is from Surah Al A'raf. And it's verse 189. The first ayah that was recited Ya ayyuhan nas. Ya ayyuhan nas. Taqu rabbakum aladhi khalaqakum min nafsa wahida. This is the first ayah from Surah Al-Nisa And everyone should know it Because it's one of the ayat that are offered recited in Khutbah Tahajah Naam One of the ayat that are offered recited in Khutbah Tahajah So I want everyone To memorize these two ayat I want everyone to memorize these two ayat and when, when, with relates to the second one, هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَاحِدَةٍ وَجَعَلَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا لِيَسْكُنَ إِلَيْهَا From Surah Al-A'raf, verse 189. And for anyone who has the, the printout of the book in front of them, uh, they can see right there the reference. I want you to memorize that ayah as well with some of the points that Imam Sa'ni he mentioned with some of the points that Imam Sa'ni he mentioned uh, wants uh, the husbands and the fathers and the brothers to test the women and their family on whether or not they memorize these verses and also ask them something about that which is understood of the, or from the benefits of Allah Ta'ala's statement liyaskuna ilayha in order to live with her ma'am to bring some 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 benefits in that uh, some fawaid that Imam Sa'ni he mentioned and related to this portion of the ayah, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, and then we will pick up from this point inside of the next week's class, bidni lahi ta'ala. Fa naktafi bihad al qadr. Sallallahu ala nabiyyana Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا